so the reason why you need to play Nico is because she's the first champion to cosplay every other champion in the game, and you can psych out your enemies beyond belief playing this bad boy. So, Nico is basically Zoe 2.0, where you can play mind games beyond belief with your enemy and deal a lot of damage at the same time. Nico's playstyle is very interesting because you have the option to go in and deal a lot of damage with your ulti, but also sit back and deal a whole lot of damage with your poke and abilities like your Q and your E. So Nico has a bunch of strengths, mainly because her kit is so diverse when it comes to stealth, crowd control, or just straight up a lot of damage. When it comes to Nico's weaknesses, she actually doesn't have many, but some things that you might want to watch out for is her lack of mobility. She has her stealth, but it's not amazing. And she's very skill shot reliant, so your damage isn't always there 100% of the time. So, Nico's passive, where you can turn into anybody on your team, and the best part is you can even auto attack while you're cosplaying, as I like to call it, as their champion. So the passive is mainly just used for mind games and honestly you want to just use it as much as possible to be as annoying as possible and make people think that your allies are in one place when they're actually not. So Nico's passive isn't actually the most broken thing in the world but paired with the W there's a lot of synergy that makes it a lot stronger and in my opinion pretty broken. So Blooming Burst the Q is an AoE skill shot where if it kills something it'll pop again and if it hits an enemy champion it'll pop again up to two times so it actually adds up a lot of damage if used properly. You generally want to focus on killing a creep with this or hitting an enemy champion so it'll deal the maximum amount of damage. The W doesn't actually deal damage on the active side of things, it offers a nice passive which gives you more damage every third auto and it's actually a lot of damage. But the active, you can use it to play mind games and you kind of want to just be really really tricky about it and combo it with your passive. You, one of the most classic things you want to do is cosplay as your ally champion, run with them, toss out your W and you got three enemies suddenly running at you and it is very scary. And there's more combos you can pull off with the passive and the W as well, but we'll get into that in a bit. Nico E, picture a Lux Q, but 10 times more broken. Not only because it's basically the same thing, but it literally speeds up when it goes through enemy creeps, champions, whatever, you name it. So the way you want to use this ability is actually pretty different from other skill shots. You want to go in front of creeps, use it so it hits them as fast as possible and gets the speed up aspect and just nails whoever else is in line. The ultimate, think of an Amumu ult on steroids and you can use it in disguise if comboed with the passive. It is disgusting, let me tell you more about it. More often than not, all you're gonna wanna do is get around as many enemies as possible and launch your ultimate and deal as much damage as possible. It is beyond strong. So now we're going to dive into some of the combos that are possible on Nico, and they are fun, fun, fun. So the first really tricky thing you can do with Nico is you can actually press W and then your stealth for a very short duration. You can switch to another cosplay while you're stealthed and you'll come out two different champions and they'll have no idea what to expect. Not the most advanced thing in the world, but something you want to keep in mind. Make sure you use your Q when the enemy is crowd controlled so you can guarantee the hit and guaranteed the extra blooms. My personal favorite is cosplaying an ally and using your ulti while disguised. You can catch enemies off guard and just instantly take out whole teams if used properly. So one of my personal favorites is cosplaying an enemy champion that has abilities nowhere near yours walk behind it and boom get the burst off they won't even see it coming and the above them something that's gonna throw your enemies off like no other okay you go in the bush and then you come out any champion you want press w switch while you're stealth and you got one champion running that way another running that way and they will have no idea what to do when it comes to farming minions i actually like to get at least one of them low so when i queue like this it'll blow up an extra time and if it killed one of those it would have bopped again killed all, everything in that circle it's it's great it's great but when it comes to pushing the wave something i like to make sure i do is have it so you can kill one it'll kill another and get the maximum amount of blooms as possible i just gotta get this freaking meteor off me <laughs> 
when it comes to roaming with Nico, it's actually not that strong until you take into account her passive. Because you can almost help your allies by making people think the jungler's top, jungler's mid, when in reality, he's diving bot and getting two free kills. A good example would be you turn into Udi or bot lane. You show on the map so their top laner thinks jungler's bot. I'm safe. I'm good to go. In reality, 10 seconds later, Udyr comes out of the bush, gets first blood top lane, bada bing, bada boo. So there's two things you want to worry about when it comes to setting up a gank or ganking in general. The first one is position yourself properly to get the super speed on your E through the creeps. And the second one being kind of just pick the most useless person on your team to pretend that you are and then go to town. And keep in mind that their HP is a big part that you want to mess around with. You can pretend you're full HP, you can pretend you're half HP, it doesn't matter. But you can actually get so in depth because you can pretend you're 200 HP playing an 80 carry, bait them in, and then pop out full HP with your jungler ganking at the same exact time. So when it comes to surviving and escaping ganks, she doesn't actually have a gap closer to get away from things but you can play mind games with your W and crowd control people with your E. Mainly W one way, walk the other, and hopefully they guess the wrong target. Something that I like to do a lot is, let's say the enemy is running at you and you have a nearby bush, go in the bush and then W out and go one way or the other. It'll help a bunch and it's a lot more tricky to read. So again, when it comes to ally ganks or getting ganked, keep in mind that your ultimate offers a root and a shield. So you can do baiting, you can do CC lockdown. The ultimate offers a lot. So when it comes to mid game with Nico, you have a bunch of kill pressure and you need to make sure you utilize it. Whether it's roaming bot, roaming top, working with your jungler and just creating fights so you can use your kit to the fullest potential. Well, when it comes to objectives, you have two things you want to focus on. The first one is if you have flash, because you can get a very, very good ulti if you do. And the second one is disguising your ulti while you're another champion, because you can prepare it in secret. Another thing you should look for is just complementing your team. So let's say, for example, you have two Morganas. Pretend you're Morganas so they won't know which one's going to launch a giant dark binding at them. And just... Utilize your allies to the fullest depending on what abilities they have. And another way to look at it is let's say you have a very fed AD carry. Become that AD carry, go on the opposite side of the screen so once they figure out which one's the real one, they're going to be all discombobulated on how to take them down because they probably have half their team on one side and half the team on the other. So when it comes to team fighting, Nico's actually pretty interesting, mainly because she has the kite back, poke, sustain damage potential from her. E in her Q, but she also has that all-in bursty get in your face with the ultimate. So when it comes to team fights, there's actually multiple different ways to play it. Let's say, for example, they have an ultra dive comp. I'm talking Malphite, another Malphite, and another Malphite. Let them engage, pretend you're another champion, and then get your ulti off the best you possibly can because you can prepare it in secret. Then, vice versa, when it's on the, let's say, for example, you are a pick comp, cosplay is someone who has abilities that aren't very scary, such as Udyr or other people without crowd control, and then all of a sudden you launch a binding out, CC them, unload your damage, your team follows up, and they're dead. So, one of the things you guys are going to love the most is how strong this ultimate is with Flash. For example, you walk up, you press it, you can flash last second, then boom, all of a sudden that comes out of nowhere and it deals so much damage, everyone's dead, it's good. So when it comes to getting vision, something to keep in mind is go with your jungler, be your jungler, and take for example your Elise. If you're side by side with your Elise and you encounter an enemy, they're not going to know where that cocoon's going to come out from, so use that to your advantage. So when it comes to Nico in the last couple fights, really try to have your flash up so you can synergize your ulti with flash because the ultimates you can get with flash are disgusting and it'll win or lose you the game depending how you do them. 
So the biggest difference between an iron, bronze, or silver Nico between a plat diamond master challenger Nico is gonna be their timing and when they engage, especially when it comes to the last couple fights. When you have flash up, you gotta know exactly when to go in, who to focus, and how to get that perfect ulti off to win your team the game. So some keys to winning on what you need to focus on when it comes to Nico. Let's say in laning phase, make sure you're constantly throwing your E through creeps so it's as fast as possible. Mid game, you're constantly getting vision control with your allies, pretending you're your allies. In late game, finding the perfect timing spots to hit the best ultis you can to win your team the game. So now that you have the tools you need to make Nico work in your ranked games, mind the living hell out of the enemy and get some elo.